After 140 years of cooperation, Ericsson, the Swedish supplier of equipment for mobile networks, has decided to leave the Russian market completely. Employees, including those who supported the equipment in telecom operators' networks, will be fired after compensation is paid. Ericsson's share of the Russian telecom equipment market is estimated at 20%. Basically, it's really a digital blockade. Ericsson started working there a long time ago. What will telecom operator using Ericsson equipment do next? Most likely, they will switch from Ericsson to Huawei. Because Huawei is unlikely to leave Russia. China believes that it's having a golden era when everyone goes out and they stay. Unfortunately for us, there will be no Armageddon there. After losing Ericsson, Russia will face the fact that the quality of Chinese equipment significantly differs from the Swedish one. I see a big difference. First of all, it is the reliability of the equipment itself and the reliability of the software. It was as reliable as possible. Ericsson has a different approach. First of all, to test and give reliable, high-quality products to its customers, while Huawei's approach is to occupy the market as quickly as possible and then to deal with everything else. The security guarantee and protection of personal data is something that Chinese analog cannot provide to their users. Even American companies stopped using Huawei's equipment long before that, because they found these big doors leaking information about the users of this equipment and Huawei software to the Chinese intelligence services. These are spyware elements inside Huawei equipment. This is a national security problem. The Russians are becoming more and more dependent on the Chinese technology which means that they are becoming targets of Chinese intelligence and espionage. The US company Dell has also confirmed its departure. This was previously reported by CNews, specifying that all of the company's Russian staff will be laid off. Back in February, we decided not to sell, service or support products in Russia, Belarus and the Donetsk and Luhansk regions of Ukraine. In addition to current embargo in Crimea, in mid-August, we closed offices and ceased all operation in Russia. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, 50 international companies have finally left the Russian market. Another 1,142 are in the process of leaving, and another 500 companies have announced the suspension of their activities as well as reduced investments. What generally affect the exit of Western companies from the Russian market is the reduction and withdrawal of both investment and technology from Russia. It is also a decrease in tax revenues for their budget, since these companies pay the funds and pay taxes in Russia, and also a decrease in the availability of goods for ordinary Russians and an increase in their cost. Since the exit of companies is not a quick process, the effects of the Russian economy and the unemployment rate may not be immediate. It is just like the sanctions work. We would like it to be a one-time thing, but first it is a cumulative effect, which will increase every month. Plus, it takes a certain amount of time. It should be noted that the work week is being reduced, especially as seen in the automotive industry. People have not been laid off, but their incomes have decreased significantly, so unemployment will become more apparent and worse in the coming months. In total, according to Forbes magazine calculations, by the end of the year, more than 600,000 people may lose their jobs in Russia. Reported by Roman Smoller, Ksenia Buhai, Yulia Bil, UATV News.